Brothers and sisters, as we gather tonight in prayer, let us pause for a few moments in silence to prepare our hearts and minds to reflect upon the passion and the resurrection of our blessed Lord. Brothers and sisters, as we journey alongside Jesus during the last days of his earthly life, we will be drawn into our Lord's agony, betrayal, and execution on Calvary. Heavenly Father, for your mercy, for all the wrongs we have done and all the good that we have failed to do, we ask you to bless us. We receive with gratitude the gift of Jesus our Lord himself to save us from our sins. And as we do so, we ask for the grace to be generous, to share your blessings with those in need. Finally, we share the astonishment and joy of that first Easter morning with music, reflection, and scripture. We ponder the all-consuming love of God, the sacrifice of his Son and his glorious resurrection, the ultimate triumph of light over darkness. We also remember all those facing anxiety, illness, or bereavement, and all whose lives are blighted by war, famine, or disease, and all forms of injustices that destroy lives and families. We hold them in our prayers, and we ask for God's mercy and blessings upon them. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When they were near Jerusalem and had come to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, 
saying to them, Go to the village facing you, and you will at once find a teetered donkey and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you are to say, The master needs them and will send them back at once. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophets. Say to the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is approaching, humble and riding on a donkey and on a colt, and foul of a beast of burden. So the disciples went and did as Jesus had told them. They brought the donkey and the colt. Then they laid their cloaks on their backs, and he took his seat on them. Great crowds of people spread their cloaks on the road, while others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them in his path. The crowds who went in front of him and those who followed were all shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who is coming in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heavens. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil as people asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, o Lord. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus, knowing that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father, having loved those who were his in the world, loved them to the end. 
they were at supper, and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hands, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And he got up from table, removed his outer garment, and taking a towel, wrapped it round his waist. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, At the moment you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus replied, If I do not wash you, you can have no share with me. Simon Peter said, Well then, Lord, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, no one who has had a bath needs washing. Such a person is clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are. He knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said, though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garment again, he went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you. You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you must wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The chief priests and the elders, however, had persuaded the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. So when the governor spoke and asked them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, but in that case, what am I to do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, let him be crucified. He asked, but what harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, let him be crucified. Then Pilate saw that he was making no impression, that in fact a riot was imminent. So he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your concern. And the people, every one of them, shouted back, Let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas for them. After having Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. On their way out, they came across a man from Cyrene called Simon and enlisted him to carry his cross. When they had reached a place called Golgotha, that is, the place of the skull, they gave him wine to drink mixed with gall, which he tasted but refused to drink. When they had finished crucifying him, they shared out his clothing by casting lots, and then sat down and stayed there, keeping guard over him. Above his head was placed the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, So you would destroy the temple and in three days rebuild it. Then save yourself, if you are God's son, and come down from the cross. The chief priest with the scribes and elders mocked him in the same way with the words, he saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He has put his trust in God, now let God rescue him if he wants him, for he did say, I am God's son. Even the bandits who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. From the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood there heard this, they said, The man is calling on Elijah. And one of them quickly ran to get a sponge, which he dipped in vinegar, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. The rest of them said, Wait, see if Elijah will come to save him. But Jesus, again crying out in a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. At that, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, the rocks were split, the tombs opened, and the bodies of holy men rose from the dead. And these after his resurrection, came out of the tomb, entered the holy city, and appeared to a number of people. Meanwhile, the centurion, together with the others guarding Jesus, had seen the earthquake and all that was taking place, and they were terrified and said, In truth, this was a son of God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. For God sent his Son into the world not to judge the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be judged, but whoever does not believe is judged already, because that person does not believe in the name of God's only Son. And the judgment is this, though the light has come into the world, people have preferred darkness to the light because their deeds were evil. And indeed, everybody who does wrong hates the light and avoids it to prevent his actions from being shown up. But whoever does the truth comes out into the light 
so that what he is doing may plainly appear as done in God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Who has given credence to what we have heard? And who has seen in it a revelation of his arm? Like a sapling, he grew up before him, like a root in arid ground. He had no form or charm to attract us, no beauty to win our hearts. He was despised, the lowest of men, a man of sorrows, familiar with suffering, one from whom, as it were, we averted our gaze, despised for whom we had no regard. Yet 
Ours were the sufferings he was bearing, ours the sorrows he was carrying. While we thought of him as someone being punished and struck with affliction by God, whereas he was being wounded for our rebellions, crushed because of our guilt, the punishment reconciling us fell on him, and we have been healed by his bruises. We had all gone astray like sheep, each taking his own way, and he brought the acts of rebellion of all of us to bear on him. Ill-treated and afflicted, he never opened his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughterhouse, like a sheep dumb before its shearers, he never opened his mouth. Forcibly, after sentence, he was taken. Which of his contemporaries was concerned at his having been cut off from the land of the living, at his having been struck dead for his people's rebellion? He was given a grave with the wicked, and his tomb is with the rich, although he had done no violence, had spoken no deceit. It was his good pleasure to crush him with pain. If he gives his life as a sin offering, he will see his offspring and prolongs his life, and through him his good pleasure will be done. After the ordeal he has endured, he will see the light and be content. By his knowledge, the upright one, my servant, will justify many by taking their guilt on himself. Hence, I shall give him a portion with the many, and he will share the booty with the mighty, for having exposed himself to death and for being counted as one of the rebellious, whereas he was bearing the sin of many and interceding for the rebellious.
still helpless when at his appointed moment Christ died for sinful men. It is not easy to die even for a good man, though of course for someone really worthy, a man might be prepared to die. But what proves that God loves us is that Christ died for us while we were still sinners. Having died to make us righteous, is it likely that he would now fail to save us from God's anger? When we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, we were still enemies. Now that we have been reconciled, surely we may count on being saved by the life of his son. Not merely because we have been reconciled, but because we are filled with joyful trust in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have already gained our reconciliation. If it is certain that death reigned over everyone as the consequence of one man's fall, it is even more certain that one man, Jesus Christ, will cause everyone to reign in life who receives the free gift that he does not deserve of being made righteous. Again, as one man's fall brought condemnation on everyone, so the good act of one man brings everyone life and makes them justified. As by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. When law came, it was to multiply the opportunities of failing. But however great the number of sins committed, grace was even greater. And so, just as sin reigned wherever there was death, so grace will reign to bring eternal life thanks to the righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
How marvellous the power of the cross! How great beyond all telling the glory of the passion! Here is the judgment seat of the Lord, the condemnation of the world, the supremacy of Christ crucified, the different sacrifices of animals are no more. The one offering of your body and blood is the fulfillment of all the different sacrificial offerings. For you are the true Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. In yourself you bring to perfection all mysteries, so that as there is one sacrifice in place of all other sacrificial offerings, there is also one kingdom gathered for all peoples. Dear beloved, let us then acknowledge what St. Paul, the teacher of the nations, acknowledged so exultantly. This is a saying worthy of trust, worthy of complete acceptance. Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. God's compassion for us is all the more wonderful because Christ died not for the righteous or the holy, but for the wicked and the sinful. And though the divine nature could not be touched by the sting of death, he took to himself through his birth as one of us something he could offer on our behalf. The power of his death once confronted our death, in the words of Hosea the prophet, Death, I shall be your death. Grave, I shall swallow you up. By dying, he submitted to the laws of the underworld. By rising again, he destroyed them. He did away with the everlasting character of death so as to make death a thing of time, not of eternity. As all die in Adam, so all will be brought to life in Christ.
brothers and sisters, as we return home tonight, let our hearts be filled with deep gratitude to the risen Christ, the same Christ who willingly suffered torture and eventually died upon the cross for our sake and the salvation of all peoples. Let us then go forth with the compassionate mercy and love of God in our hearts, that we may witness to his message of the good news of eternal salvation in the daily living and challenges of our lives with greater fidelity. And may Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Thanks be to God.